Hey everybody, Sarah Thrifting for The Nest. Thanks so much for popping in on YouTube. I got another haul for you today. I also wanted to talk to you today a little bit about what my life typically looks like a day in the life of a reseller. Um, I'm not so savvy with my camera to take you around with like a GoPro. Um, it'd probably be pretty boring anyway. But I figure a lot of people ask me questions about what I do and how I balance my life and I have not mastered balance whatsoever but I'm working on it. I strive for balance as a mom and as a wife and as a friend and as a reseller. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today as well as share with you my haul from the Goodwill outlet, the bins this morning. Um, so I got 35 pounds and I spent about $45 ish. I don't have my receipt in front of me to confirm that, but I do pay by the pound at the Goodwill outlet store and pay about $1.30 a pound for my items. And so we'll go ahead and start first. I just want to share with you about what my typical day looks like. So I am an early bird. I like to get up early in the morning, which for me means about five o'clock is typical five, five thirty. And I love to have the house quiet and to myself. And sometimes my husband's up with me that early before he goes to work. And we sit in silence next to each other. Uh, honestly, we um, have our time um, in our devotionals. I it's, That's the time that I take to pray and read my Bible and start my devotionals during the day. Um, it wasn't always that way. And some days I'm super tempted to be on social media instead and scroll and zone out. So for me, that is my balance um, of starting my day, really trying to start it with the Lord. So I start that way, drink probably a couple cups of coffee, and then I get started. So my kids get up at seven ish. Uh, to get ready for school. So I am full on mom mode at that point. Ideally, because I get up at five in the morning, you would think that maybe I get some shipping done or I, I would do some other things um, to get going on my business stuff early, but I don't typically because I just find that I charge my battery in the morning at that time. So anyway, there will be, there will be some times that I actually try to get a head start. I pull my stuff. I do my shipping. Sometimes I will list um, but I'm just giving you my typical day. So I get my kids off to school. My kids uh, don't take the bus, so I have to drive them to school, which is only about a 15-minute drive away from our house. And then a couple days a week I go to the bins. I try to get to the bins two days a week, sometimes three, just depending on what my inventory looks like, what my backlog looks like. You can see my piles of stuff that I need to photograph over there. Um, and that doesn't that's the stuff that I've already like sorted and put into play. And then I've got two bags of stuff here from my haul this morning at the bins um, that I will add to that stack to photograph. And then I will typically come home and photograph. I What I like to do, how I like to organize and strategize, and this isn't the same for everybody, but this is what works for me, is I will photograph, I'll set like a timer. I'll say, okay, I have an hour to photograph. So how many items can I get photographed in an hour? And it really just depends on what the items need. Um, but you can see my uh, photography setup is back here. It's simple. I just have a hanging mannequin. I've got two umbrella lights. Um, it's not fancy. My umbrella lights are like the spindles are broken, but you know what? They do the job and I have a small space. So I run my entire business out of this little office here, which I know you don't get a big scope of, of what it looks like. And honestly, it's always a mess. So, um, and then I do store all my items in totes on shelving in my garage. So that's what that looks like. Um, for me, but I do an hour of photography. Um, I have my items sorted um, by men's, women's, and then bottoms, right? So skirts, pants, anything, just based on how I hang it. So I have a women's bust to photograph. I have a men's bust to photograph. And then I just have like a coat or sorry, a coat. I have a pants hanger or a skirt hanger um, that I do all my bottoms in. So I basically photograph as much as I can in that period of time that I've set for myself. And then I will sit down and list I like to list from the computer. I like to, not instead of my phone. So I create all my listings on the computer and I basically set everything as drafts. And then I go in with my iPad, which I have taken my photos on later. I'll usually go on, on sit on the couch. <laughs> this is like my break period. And then I'll upload all my photos um, to my listings. And then I will make them live at that point, or I will schedule them to go live later, depending on my goals for that particular day. I like to try to get at least 20 items up a day. That doesn't always happen. Um, 10 is like my minimum. I have to get 10. And then 15 is like, eh, that's a pretty good day. That'll keep me pretty consistent if I can get 15 items up a day. 
in my ideal world, I will get 30 items up a day. Um, that's always my goal, but it's not always realistic. So, and because I'm working on balance, um, that it just doesn't always happen. So, but I find that 15 to 20 keeps my store consistent. And if I have to have a bare minimum up, it's going to be 10 items that go up a day. So a lot of people have been messaging me and just asking me, how many items do you get up a day? What is your, what does your day look like? What is this? How do you organize? So, um, after I get my listings up and I upload photos and get them to go live, then that's pretty much it. So my kids get off of school at three o'clock and then it's time to hang out with them. I forgot to mention that I do my shipping in the morning. I try to get it done first thing before I go to the bins or um, do my uh, photographing and my listing. I do ship every single day um, on Poshmark and on my eBay store just to keep things moving. Um, I do not ship on Saturdays, so I do take the weekend off. And Saturdays, because I keep those days as family days, sometimes I'll do some sourcing. with My, my husband likes to go. My kids don't love it. So I try to limit my time sourcing when I'm with my family. Um, but sometimes we'll go to retail Goodwill stores. We don't ever go to Goodwill outlet with my kids. I mean, we've done it a couple times, but it's just, I'm super distracted there. That place is chaos, and I feel like my kids would bore really easily. And honestly, I go all mama bear at the bins when my kids are there. So I'm I'm super divided um, when I am trying to shop at the bins with my kids. So I don't do it very often. And uh, they just know that uh, Goodwills are just a part of our life sometimes. We just don't do it super, super often with them. They know though when we go to the beach or when we go like on a trip, like I'm always scouting out the, the thrift stores in the area because it's always nice to go to someplace new that you haven't, that you, that's not available to you all the time. So, okay, that's my life. That's it. Like, I feel like, um, you know, if you're a reseller and if you've been a reseller for a long time, when people ask what you do, it's very confusing. It's like, what? You buy stuff at the Goodwill and you sell it online. It's super strange. You try to explain the bins and that's even weirder. So uh, I like to just break it down simplicity wise. Um, it makes it easy and attainable. And if this is something that maybe you are not a reseller yet, but you're thinking about it, you're thinking about jumping in, it's really not complicated. It's not easy. Like it's hard work. You have to work hard, but it's pretty simple. Um, this business is so it's how I'm able to really work it around my life as a stay at home mom. Um, if my kids are sick at school, it's easy for me to turn off the computer and go get my kids and bring them back home. And, um, you know, because I'm a morning person, if I feel the desire to, um, get started with my day before my kids even get out of bed, then I can. And during the summertime, that works really well for me too. I can get a bunch of work done before they even get out of bed in the mornings. So this is what works for us now. Works, We love it. Um, works really well for our family. And as I'm kind of picking my business back up and figuring out what I want my flow to look like, that's, that's where I've landed. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm getting over a cold, so my voice is not quite what it should be. Um, so another thing that I do is I just feel like if I, if I feel like, okay, I've been sitting for a really long time, if I'm listing for a long time, I like to get up and go on walks in my neighborhood. That's really important too, just to take breaks. I try to eat my lunch, not at my desk. It's really easy to say, I'm just going to work through this. I did it at my old job too, though. I always ate at my desk at my corporate job. So some of those old habits die hard in that. So I try to eat my lunch in my kitchen, have some music on, read a book, um, and take a break for myself, um, as I would any other corporate job, except that I didn't have my old corporate job, but you know, try to live within healthy boundaries. So anyway, we'll get to what you guys all came here for. I have my Goodwill outlet haul, so I will go ahead and get that started. So I've got two big Ikea blue bags full of stuff from the outlet. It's fun stuff today. I was excited about what I got. Nothing like amazing. Again, I'm not picking up Gucci. I'm not picking up super high end, um, designer brands. It's happened before. It's just not what I am going to typically find at the Goodwill outlet. So I'm always looking for bread and butter and stuff that I know is just going to consistently sell or things that catch my eye. And I picked up a few things today that are super random. You'll see, but I like random. I like to just test out brands, test out styles, see what's selling. Um, and then I have a really quirky sense of style, things that I think are fun, maybe things that like in another life I might wear and why not buy it? And I am a sucker for nostalgic 80s, 90s clothing. 
So I will always pick that stuff up whether or not it's actually going to sell or not. So you might you might see some of that stuff in here too. Okay. So this I, this I just saw it, ha it is Disney Coco like it, it's almost Halloween. I can't tell though. It doesn't seem like it's a costume. Sorry, now I'm all blurry. So it doesn't seem like it's a costume. It's a dress, a cold shoulder dress, and it's velvet. And I'm not quite sure if um, if this is just like a Coco themed top or if it is a costume. So I'm going to do a little bit of research on that and, and see if I can get that listed properly with the right keywords. All right. I'm still blurry. Maybe this, maybe if I zoom out on something, it won't be blurry anymore. So this is a Columbia um, PFG shirt. Am I still blurry? Yep, still blurry. Oh man, you guys, my camera. Um, so this is, I think it's, it's pink stripes, but I'm pretty sure this is a men's shirt. So um, it's a vented fishing shirt, and this line just sells really well for me. Has since the beginning of time. It's a sure thing. Since the beginning of time before the internet existed. Since the beginning of my time selling on eBay, um, I will pick up anything that's Columbia PFG. Okay, I picked this up because it's a North Face piece. Um, and again, North Face just doesn't sell quite as well as it used to, but it's still a good sell, and I should probably get at least 20 for this cool hoodie. Oh, I'm so frustrated that I'm still blurry, and I can't, I cannot shake it. Okay, this is a Prana... Um, dress. This, yeah, the label is always kind of tricky to find in these dresses. So I will show you this tag, Prana. I think I'm getting it clear in the image. It's when I pull back. And I'm back. I'm back. I'm not blurry for a minute. Okay. So it's just a stretch summery dress. And these do pretty well. This is a good 20 bucks at least for me. And on the same line, I picked up this. It's MPG brand, which just isn't quite as popular of a brand, but this line actually does decently well if it's in the right style. So it's another dress, like an athletic dress. So I should probably be able to sell that for 15 to $20. I picked this up because it was new with tags, nothing fancy, just a plain Under Armour t-shirt. But again, new with tags, MSRP is $25 on it. I will likely sell it for 10, but it's good bread and butter piece to have in my store. Here is another Columbia PFG shirt. So just like the other one, just a different color. Um, again, these are quick sellers in my store. Okay. This is not a brand that anybody should really be looking for, but it's the style that caught my eye and I love it. So it's Forever 21, which I don't pick up typically, but I don't think you can even pick up the detail on the camera with this, but it is like this shiny, um, uh, sparkly material and it caught my eye so I had to pick it up it probably won't sell for a ton but it's one of those pieces that I wanted to have in my store so I grabbed it <coughs> let me hydrate real quick you guys all right this is Wilfred it's an Aritzia brand so here is the you get the basic style and this brand typically does well. It um, It's hit and miss style dependent. So there's the tag. It's cute. It's a size four, so it's a smaller size. And the smaller sizes don't always do quite as well for me. But again, I'll say it again. When you are at the bins, you don't tell the bins what you're going to buy there. The bins tells you what you're going to buy. This is a ruched express dress. Um, Express, again, is not a brand that, see, I, you're going to hear this from me because it's all style dependent. So this doesn't mean go out and buy all the Express, but Express does have um, a solid following. I'm going to zoom in here just so I can maybe try to get clarity on my camera again. Um, this brand does really well um, for the basic pieces, I find. So I will pick up Express um, if it is a good basic piece and it's a sleeveless little black dress. So I think it's a good, good find for the for what it is. I mean, it weighs hardly anything. Um, I built my business on Columbia jackets, so I'm always going to buy a good Columbia jacket in good condition. This does need a little bit of stain treatment on the, um, there's the tag here. I'm going to try not to blur myself again. Um, it does need a little bit of stain treatment on the sleeve ends, but that's easy to do. I use um, 
I know a lot of people have like their DIY stain remover products. I just swear by the Resolve, the spray and wash with Resolve. It's the green bottle of like a pre-treatment. If that can't get out the stain, nothing does in my opinion. I know um, I will probably get a lot of comments on everybody's favorite stain treatment, but I'm I just don't want to put a lot of effort into it. So if I think I can't get it out with my stain treatment that I prefer, then I won't buy it. And then sometimes I try and it still doesn't come out, so I will have a pile of stuff to return or redonate to the Goodwill if it just didn't come clean. Um, this totally caught my eye. It's a it's like a caftan robe. It's an Atori brand. And this brand does like their lingerie um, style robes do really well. This is just like a big like a moo, moo gown. I love it. I love, this is kind of typical, like this, as far as their style and prints. So these colorful prints will always catch my eye. Um, oh, it looks like there's like a pen mark on it. Okay. Well, it's like a polyester. So I bet that'll come out in the wash, but love that piece. Um, I sell their robes probably for about 25 bucks a piece. Okay. These are so not my style, but I know there's somebody's style. So there's, there's Zara jeans. But look how wide these legs are. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the 90s, which, I mean, this style's kind of coming back a little bit. So it's the Zara TRF collection. Um, I checked comps. There weren't a ton for this style, but the one that was there sold for 30 bucks, which is a great price for me considering, I mean, they're a little heavy, they're jeans. So I sold, or I picked them up for probably about $1.50, $2. Fine by me if, if I can sell them for 30. And I'm really picky about jeans. Um, that I pick up a because they're heavy B because I don't like to store them. Do I have like water on my shirt? Yeah. Awesome. Nope. It's just like a fuzzy, um, real life reseller. Um, anyway, but so I'm, I am picky about the brands that I pick up on jeans. I like to go with sure things and I don't like to sit on them for a long time. So, um, these are seven for all mankind. They're a high waist button fly. They're in style right now. Um, Vintage straight is their style. They're not like dojos were a big thing like two years ago. They still sell. They don't sell for what they used to. Again, the, the market's always changing always. So we always have to be prepared. We always have to be, um, watching the styles, um, checking comps for things. Sorry. I was just making sure there's like a fuzzy on here and I wanted to make sure it wasn't a hole. Anyway, we have to be checking comps for things, knowing what current styles of jeans are selling. Um, I've, wasted a lot of money buying jeans that just sat forever and then I ended up re-donating and so I am just super picky about them because I don't like storing jeans in mass quantities. Okay, so in a previous haul video that I did, I don't remember if it was like my last one or the one before, but I picked up like a J. Crew women's turtleneck sweater. These big chunky J. Crew sweaters sell so well for me. I love them. I love to sell them. They usually can squeeze into a padded flat rate envelope. So it costs like $7 and 33 cents for me, um, to ship them. Although I will say this one's probably going to be like, it probably won't fit into a padded flat rate. It's big. It's, it's chunkier. It's really heavy. A wool knit. It's got a few fabric pills on it, but it's a good style for this kind. It's a men's sweater. I just think it'll do really well. I think I'll sell at least for 30 to $40. <clears throat> All right. I was thinking today, this style of like Nike athletic legging would have gotten me super excited like three years ago, four years ago. It's what I always wanted to find. And I was selling for 25 bucks a pair. Now I'm lucky if I can get 10 or 12, 15 for these. So these have become bread and butter pieces for me, but they weigh hardly anything. So it's a great piece to buy. Okay. This is a theory blazer theory. I love picking up this brand. Um, theory does pretty well for me and it is new with tags. So here's the catch. It's an older style. The MSRP on it is $395. So that's awesome. It from being in storage though, it has like some spots on it. So I'm going to have to give it a little bit of TLC because it's, it's hard to list a new with tags item that has stains on it. It's, and it's not even stains. Like it will come out with like a, a shout wipe or something. I'm just going to have to give it a little bit of care before I list it, but I think it's wool. Yeah. It's a wool blazer. So a $400 blazer I found 
for maybe two bucks in the bins. I'm hoping I can get at least 50 out of it. So we'll see. We'll see how well it cleans up. And I love J. Crew Basics. This is a men's J. Crew um, shirt, just a button up shirt. So uh, these sell pretty well for me in the, in the $15 range or so. This is a super fun piece that I got. And I love picking up this stuff. I've never heard of this brand before. <coughs> um, Boyne Valley Weavers is the brand. So maybe it's a bolo. Pretty sure it's a bolo, but I'm not, I've never seen this before. So I don't know, like, it's hard to say this is a bolo, but I've never seen it in my seven years of reselling. Perhaps you have. Obviously some people have, because I checked comps and they do really well. So it's a cape style and it's a, it's like a wool cape. I thought it was a vintage piece at first, but I actually don't think that it is. It says it's handcrafted in Ireland. So, um, and you know, it's in perfect condition and the button bag's still attached. So I think this is brand new and never worn, even though there's no tag attached. So I feel like this was a pretty good buy. The Goodwill retail store, the tag is attached here from the retail store before I got to the bins, priced it at 20 bucks, probably just because of what it is. Um, yeah, the tag says it's 100% lamb's wool. This doesn't excite me, but it's new with tags. It's a Dockers jacket, men's jacket. Um, and because it's new with tags with an MSRP of $62, I feel like I couldn't just leave it at the bins. It cost me maybe a dollar fifty. I think it's probably over over a pound. Um, so it's just, I mean, honestly, anything new with tags is worth looking at twice. I'm not saying to buy everything that's new with tags. Fast fashion pieces and certain certain fast fashion pieces aren't gonna sell even with tags on them. But Dockers is still it's a steadfast brand that everybody's familiar with. So I knew, I knew that it was like a safe, a safe bet to pick it up and know that I could sell it for something. Okay. This is where I get ridiculous. There is literally no rhyme or reason for me to pick this up. Um, but for the same reason I, I picked up that fancy black eighties, nineties number, um, in my last haul, I, I picked this up. It's like, it's not even a robe, right? Like I think here it looks like it's some like lingerie sheer robe. It's not, it's like a shrug. Well, I don't think it is. Sterling styles. It's totally an eighties tag, but I couldn't, I mean, come on, you guys like this is, this is why I love what I do. I can pick up J crew all day long, but this is the fun stuff to pick up and try to sell. And it'll, I mean, it'll either sell really fast or it'll sit for months and I'll sell it eventually for $5 plus shipping. Who knows? But I love it. I could not leave it behind. I am a sucker for that stuff because it's just fun. Okay, I would love to know if anybody's ever heard of this brand because I've never heard of it until today. The comps are all over the place. <clears throat> um, it's a brand called People Like Frank. People are saying, people are saying, the internet is saying, on eBay people are listing this brand as an anthropology brand. I'm not going to do that because the tag is not an anthropology tag. It looks like it could be an anthropology piece. That's like, maybe that's why. And they're just keyword spamming. Um, but let me know if you've sold this, if you have any experience with it. Cause it's really cute. It's a satin jacket. I couldn't pass it up based on the style alone. I love the sleeves, the ruched sleeves and, um, the pockets. It's almost, it's almost lag and look like it's almost this flowy, um, style of blazer. I love it. That's why I bought it. I will always pick up Lane Bryant in good condition. So it's a good $10 bill right there or more. We'll see. I did pick up a couple of bras, Torrid bras. Um, it's on my short list of brands of bras that I will pick up. This is a Lane Bryant new with tags dress with an MSRP of $70. It's a velvet dress. I love it. It's super cute. It's a size. 20. Um, and this should do well. Any, any plus size dresses that are new with tags, especially ones that have a common brand, like a popular brand for that size and style should do well. This is another new brand to me. And I love, I love discovering new brands. So this always tells me that it doesn't matter how it, I know there are more experienced resellers than me, but I would consider myself a pretty experienced reseller. I've been doing this for quite a while, all things considered. I'm not going to pronounce this right. Um, it's A-L-Q-U-E-M-A, Alkema, maybe. 
It's a crinkle dress. But check out the comps if you have a chance. Go look at comps for this brand. Never seen it before. I looked at comps. I wasn't actually expecting much. I picked it up because of the style. The style was curious to me. The tag was curious to me. So I'll show you the tag. And then I felt like, you know what? This might be worth picking up. And I did. And the comps look really good. So I picked it up from the bins. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, this is the Chico's Traveler's line. I still pick it up no matter what. Um, it, it does well. Uh, it's consistent for me in sales. So if it's a can't lose situation, no matter what the style is, I'm going to pick it up. This is my first time picking up this brand. It's not anything super fancy. It's Diane Gilman, their plus line. New with tags again, so I feel like, okay, it's a plus size piece and it's new with tags. So uh, chances are it's gonna sell. And I'm not lo looking for only $50 nut pieces. I'm looking for stuff that's going to sell. Um, I like to keep momentum going in my store and I like to have a mixture of things that sell for $10 and a mixture of things that sell for $100. It just depends on what it is, but if I'm looking at reality, I'm not only going to pick up $100 things at the pins. Um, I bought this for my husband, so you don't care about that. It's a sweater. It's a nice sweater. It's almost winter. All right, so I picked up this because it's Carhartt. It's just a button-up men's Carhartt shirt. It's an extra large, I believe, um, in really good condition. So Carhartt in good condition is a no-brainer for me. I will always pick it up. Okay, so I picked this, picked this up, I threw it back in the bins, and then I was like, no, I'm going to get it. Um, so we'll see. I'm really picky about Ann Taylor Loft pieces that I pick up. Sometimes I feel like they weigh my store down. Sometimes I feel like they're good bread and butter pieces. It just depends on what it is. So it's a velvet blazer, though, and I like velvet. So I picked it up. It's a size 6. It needs a little bit of TLC. Um... Needs just a little bit of TLC, but I think I can fix it up to sell it. And I think these velvet pieces tend to do really well around the holidays. So I felt like it was a it was a good decision to pick it back up. I'm not regretting it. Um, okay, this is a Torrid. Torrid, right? Yeah, Torrid piece. I think a lot of people are probably familiar with Torrid, but Torrid's a good plus size brand as well. A lot of people are looking for it. And it, it's pretty spendy in the store. I've gone inside of a Torrid store to buy stuff for myself and I walk right out because I'm like, no, I don't, I don't spend real money on clothing. <laughs> like it's not, it's not what I do. I feel like you can't do what I do. I don't know. Maybe you can. My husband always looks at it like the flip side. He's like, you go to the bins and you buy stuff for a dollar and you sell it for $40. And then you can take that $40 and go buy something you really want at a regular store. I don't quite see it like that. <laughs> I feel that way about like shoes, right? Like I can't, typically find shoes for my family at the bins. I can sometimes. I love Toms and I find them all the time at the bins, but I will spend 30 bucks at the Nike store for shoes for my kids. So it all balances out, but I don't like to spend real money at regular stores for clothes. I'm super spoiled by my business. All right. This is Lou and Gray. Again, I've said it before. I love Lou and Gray. It's one of my favorite brands ever. It's an Ann Taylor, uh, Ann Taylor brand. It's so cute. I'll show it to you. I don't know why it doesn't sell for more. Um, it's super hit and miss. It's a slow moving product for me, but I love it. I just, I keep picking it up in hopes either that it's going to be my size, which that dress is not, or that somehow somewhere people are going to realize how quality their stuff is and buy it for themselves. So it's my suggestion to the marketplace. This is one of my new favorite brands to pick up. It's Lulu's. I I'm selling it really quickly these days. It's a cute summer dress, so it's not super in season, but that's okay. I think somebody will get it. It's an extra large, um, so it's a good size to pick up. Oh, you know what, though? Bummer. Nope, I won't be selling it because this is an unfixable issue. It's There's a fray. I'm sure somebody would still buy it. Maybe I'll auction it. I like, I'll auction pieces that um, have flaws in them if I bought them already, and it's like, well, I could either auction it and see if it sells for something, or I can send it back to the Goodwill. I'll have to make that decision a little bit later, but that's a bummer. Otherwise, it's a cute style and worth picking up. All right. These are Prana pants. Man, I've done really well with Prana Extra Large women's pants lately. I feel like I've picked up a lot of this size. 
at the bins. They're super cute too. They're in style. They're a flowy tapered pant. Um, and I think based on the style and the size, let's see if I can get you a good picture of that tag. Probably not ish. Maybe there you go. Ish kind of, there's my blurry tag pictures. Ho hopefully you're learning so much from them. Um, here's another torrid piece. This one is new with tags. It's a sheer blouse size four. So it's a great size. MSRP is $44.50 on this piece. So I should get at least 20, 25, I think, because it has tags on it. Here's another, um, these are also theory. I believe this is a newer theory, theory tag. Pretty sure this is more current than that other one that I picked up. Let's see if I can get that in. Oh my goodness, like directionally, which way do I go? Um, these are a wool blend career pant. So I like them. I think that they should do well. Theory will either move super fast for me or it will sit for a long time and eventually sell. But I mean, that I feel like that's just the nature of what we do. And the market's always changing, so you better be ready for anything. All right, these are um, loft outlet. They're just a, a legging, like a women's legging. Nothing super fancy. Um, like I said, I'm picky about what I pick up from the loft, but I feel like that was a worthwhile piece. And then now I am at my last, my last piece, my last piece of the 35 pound haul today. This is a brand I will always pick up just because I love it. Um, it will sit for me for a little while typically though. Um, their plus sizes move a lot faster. They, this is a small, it's Lindy Bop. So it's like a rockabilly brand, but it's a really cute polka dot dress. I love it and I just love the style of their stuff so I will always pick it up because of that um, because of the size it might take a while to sell and I probably will sell it for about 20 bucks their plus sizes do a lot better for me and sell a lot quicker so anyway there's my haul for today I appreciate you guys tuning in um, if you have any questions please feel free to drop them in the comments I would love to help answer any of them I've just appreciated your comments on my videos and um, I've been get, getting a lot of you heading over to my Instagram page and communicating with me over there. So I, you can find me over on Instagram at thrifting for the nest, all one word. My Poshmark closet, um, since some of you have also asked me that is seagull nest and you can find me on eBay at the seagull nest. Have I, have I covered all my bases? Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Um, and would just love to hear what you guys are thinking. Um, about the content that I'm putting out. So thanks again for joining me. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I hope that this added value to you and your business. Um, and I think that's all I got for you today. Thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.